This is the new Skoda Octavia. Now, same new, it's actually a restyled version of the car which came out back in 2013. So it's had some design tweaks. Now, can you spot what the main one is? I'm kind of wearing a clue. Well, it's the lights. What they've done, they split the lights in two. Now, personally, I'm not a big fan of that. I, I, I just prefer the lights the way they were before, kind of all as one. Now, as well as those front lights, you've also got some different tail lights as well. So they're now all LED. And there's some other bits and pieces which I'll go on to talk about in a moment. But this car, it starts from £17,000. So it's pretty good value. Now, if you click up there, you can go to carwow.co.uk and you'll be able to configure a car exactly as you want it and then get offers from dealers to be able to buy a price you're confident in. And on average, people save £3,600 on a new car at Carwow. So if you're wanting to buy a new car, you know someone who is, it's worth just going there to check out the deals. Now, on the inside, there is perhaps the most important change on this revised Octavia, and that's the infotainment system. So as standard, you get an eight inch screen and it's nice and shiny. You've got touch screen buttons as well. It all looks pretty slick, it's very easy to use. And all models right across the range get that and it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So you can just connect your phone to it and use a nav off your phone. If you actually want navigation, you need to step up to the SEL version because then you get it. This particular screen actually is the larger nine inch screen. It's the upgraded system and that's an optional extra on this particular car. And if you want to see our full in-depth video review of it, just click up there and you can also have another look around this car's cabin. But I'm going to summarise what this car's like on the inside. So it's pretty much the same as the Octavia from 2013 really. You know, it's all kind of pretty well made and it's nice but it's a little bit perhaps shall we say bland especially in this dark color something that is slightly new though it's hard to tell it's the the climate control buttons and that's about it now in terms of interior cubby spaces it's good this car so you've got huge door bins there you go fit a large bottle in there got a bit of storage under there not too much glove box is a reasonable size and there's some handy storage there as well by the driver's knee but yeah on the whole it's a functional, usable, useful cabin. So, onto the back. So, it's a little wonder that mini cab drivers often choose to buy Skoda Octavias because they're absolutely massive in the back for a car of this price. I mean, look at this, right? So, headroom, yeah, that's good, but it's knee room which is really impressive. I mean, this that seat there is in my normal driving position, and look how much room I've got. I can really stretch out almost like I'm in a limousine, but like I say, it's a budget price car. Now, if you need to carry three at once, the middle seat is a little bit raised up, and you do have this big hump in the floor, but the footwells are big, and this seat isn't too bad. That it is doable if you want to share your fare with two other rear passengers. So, yeah, not bad at all. In terms of storage, well, you have got some door bins that are reasonably large in the back, so you know, I can just about squeeze that big bottle in there. You've also got, look at this, you've got some cup holders there and through loading as well with a ski hatch. And there's even a little cubby down here, which once probably would have been used for your cigarette ash, but not anymore, obviously, because everyone's giving up smoking. Um, you can use it to keep your mobile phone in there. So let's move on to the boot. And here, the Octavia's theme for giving you loads of space for your money continues because well, the actual capacity of the boot is probably about 40% greater than on something like a Volkswagen Golf or Vauxhall Astra. I mean, it's huge, look at it, it's massive. Great for carrying all your luggage with you. Now, I'm just gonna remove this so you can see what's going on. There we go, right. So, it's a big space, yes. There are a few tethering points here, maybe down here. 12 volt socket but you know you've got quite a big low lip to lift stuff over there's no real underfloor storage as such i mean we do have a space over spare wheel there and when i fold the seats down if you need even more space <laughs> maybe not but there we go look when you fold the seats down you can see can you see it there look there is a bit of a ridge and that makes it a bit of a pain to push heavy items right to the front but yeah on the whole i can forgive it just by the sheer amount of volume it's got. Now, if you want more information on this car's practicality, click up there, you can see how much stuff you can cram into this car's boot, how easy it is to fit a child seat, and what it's like with three people in the back seats. Right then, that's all the practical stuff dealt with. Time to hit the road. Underneath its skin, this Skoda Octavia actually shares many of its parts with the Volkswagen Golf, but that's because Volkswagen actually owns Skoda. It does feel a little bit different to drive than the Golf though. Now, on the whole, it's comfortable and it goes around corners well enough, but it doesn't seem to deal with bumps at lower speed as well as the Golf or a Vauxhall Astra. And in terms of the cornering, like I said, it's all right, 
but it's never fun in the way that something like a Ford Focus is. Still, it's all, it's an all right car to drive. And at speed, you don't get too much noise. Only a bit of wind whistle whipped up from around this area. So yeah, it's not quite as quiet to travel in as the aforementioned Volkswagen Golf, but it is a cheaper car. In terms of the engines, well, they're very similar to the Golf. So you can get 1.6 litre diesel, two litre diesel, which is probably the best bet if you're doing lots and lots of miles or you're a minicab driver, because it's punchy and pretty economical. You can get two petrols, well, you can actually get three. You can get two normal petrols. There's one litre, which is just about adequate. The one in this car, which for me is the best engine, and you should probably buy it, the 150 1.4 TSI turbo petrol. It's supposed to do 54 miles per gallon. I'm getting 42. So like I say, unless you're doing lots of miles, you don't really need the diesel and it's smoother, it's quieter, and yeah, it's pretty punchy as well. You can also get a two litre turbo petrol in the hot VRS, but yeah, you don't really need that unless you plan on flinging this car down the back road. That car also has beefed up suspension, which does ride a little bit firmer. If you do want to improve the comfort of your Octavia, you can fit the more powerful models with adaptive suspension, but really, it's probably not worth the extra cost on a car like this, which is all about value for money. In terms of visibility, you know, it's not too bad, so blind spot a little bit there. Back window's quite big, and the pillars at the back, they're not too intrusive. And you can see for yourself by clicking up there to join me for a 360 degree passenger ride video. In terms of the rest of the experience, well, the light steering makes it easy to drive in town. The gear shift's quite nice, though it is a bit notchy on the manual. You can get an automatic, which, which is pretty impressive, though that can be a little bit jerky when you're manoeuvring at 10 speeds. But on the whole, the Octavia is a nice car to drive that doesn't exactly thrill you or do anything particularly special, but it's not bad either. Not everything about the Skoda Octavia is great. Here's five annoying things about it. There's so many blanked out buttons there to remind you of all the extras you couldn't afford, even though this car is towards the top of the range. Unlike in some other cars, there's no compartment in the boot to store the parcel shelf underneath, which means if you load it full of stuff on top of this, it's probably going to get crushed. I mean, what will you do? Because there's no special runner or holder for the rear seat belt, they can sometimes get snapped when you put the seats back. Where's it gone? This big shiny screen may look good, but when you turn the car off, you're just left with these horrible streaks from greasy fingers. Yuck. This bonnet is so heavy that it could really do with having some gas struts to help you out. I mean, look at this. <laughs> you want to get your fingers trapped under there. Thankfully, there's still plenty to like about the Skoda Octavia, which helps to make up for all this. Underneath the driver's seat, there's a special compartment for a high-vis vest, whereas underneath the passenger seat, you have one for an umbrella. Uh, that's, that's probably not a good idea to do in a car. You get these handy detachable panels in the boot which have Velcro on the bottom, so you can use them as special dividers to stop stuff rolling around when you're getting through corners. There's a handy clip here to hold your parking ticket or your book of stamps if you haven't got a parking ticket to illustrate your point. With the optional Skoda phone box, you get wireless charging for your phone and it also boosts the signal. The Octavia's auto emergency brake can now also detect pedestrians. I'm wearing this high vis just for our own internal health and safety reasons. Now, if you click up there, you can get more information and save an average of £2,600 on a new Skoda Octavia at carwow.co.uk. So then, what's my verdict on this car? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the Skoda Octavia might be a little bit bland to look at and to drive, but it's a great all-round, fabulous value family car. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it and click up there to subscribe to our channel. There for my 360 degree passenger ride video, there for the practicality video, and down there for the infotainment video. Now, did you spot the Easter egg in the video? It was the octave in the car's cubby hole.